Hey there, Leo. Welcome to your reading for July 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general reading. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't don't hesitate to heal me. Please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. Um, I have put back the information about um, uh, uh, looking up your either your Eastern chart versus your Western chart. Now here in the United States, we are taught the Western or tropical system. Um, but there is, there are many, there are many different systems, but there is another main system. It's the Eastern system. It's called Hindu astrology, Vedic astrology, sidereal astrology, or you could just say the Eastern, Eastern astrology. Um, I have put those back in because I resonate a lot with my Eastern chart, which would be an Aries sun, uh, Leo, moon, uh, I'm sorry, Leo rising, Cancer moon, Pisces, Venus. I, I find that I resonate with that more than my Western. But the reason why I put that down in, number one, I took it out because there was so much going on in the description box, I thought it was too much information. But I've been wanting to put it back for some time. And it's back there now. So my suggestion is you use those links, calculate your Western chart, then calculate your Eastern chart. It's all the same. All you need is your time of the date of birth, where you were born, and the time you were born to get your full chart for both systems, um, and then compare them, okay? See which one you resonate with the most. Go through the readings, either my readings or maybe you're uh, another trusted reader that you, that you resonate well with, and comp compare those readings. See which ones resonate with you the most, yes? So with that said, let's just get into your reading here, Leo. I have a pre-shuffle here for you now. Um, in this pre-shuffle, you have the Queen of Cups with the Wheel of Fortune and also the Ten of Pentacles. Now, you actually, Leo, came out in the Cancerian reading, which I did right before this one, in the form of the King of Wands. And now, Cancer is coming out for you. So, I don't know if maybe you're a Cancer Leo Cusper, like, for example, me, my moon in Eastern astrology is Cancer, but it's at the 29 degrees of Cancer, which is the, what, the very last, the, the, well, no, 30 degrees. It's the very end of Cancer. So I guess you could say my moon sign is like a Cancer Leo cusper. You could be that, or you could be a Leo that's dealing with a Cancer, okay? It doesn't matter. Take it as it resonates, all right? Um, but what I'm picking up here is that there could be potentially a Cancerian around you, near you, close to you, or that you are connected with that, um, shit, I literally just heard feels very much the same way about you as you do about them. Because when the Queen of Cups came out, the first, like when it came out initially, the Ace of Cups was underneath the deck. But then I kept shuffling to get some more, um, a little deeper guidance. Now we have the Five of Cups underneath the deck. Okay, I am seeing the now, now, now the Queen of Cups could be a Piscean, it could also be a Scorpio or a Cancerian, or it could be you just in your emotions. Maybe you resonate more with feminine energy, so that's why it's coming out as the Queen of Cups, or maybe you are just really tuning into your intuitive side. But what I'm getting with this, these four cards here in the Queen of Cups, the, the Wheel of Fortune, the Ten of Pentacles, and the Five of Cups. Um, you have a feminine energy that you have connected with, or maybe you are this feminine energy. There is a masculine energy that has a feminine energy that they have connected with that is represented by this Queen of Cups here that is very much in love with them, feels very much the same way you feel about them. Um, th th it goes vice versa. And one of the last cards that came out during that Cancer video in the pre-shuffle was the King of Cups, all right? So you might want to watch that video. Um, but what I'm picking up here is this Leo, this masculine energy. Now you could be, you could be the Leo, but you're the feminine energy here. If that's the case, then I'm talking about this person that you're connected with, the masculine counterpart to your feminine, regardless of gender. Doesn't have to be. The, we're not talking gender. We're talking energy here. Okay. Um, energy is root neutral. Gender is binary. Energy is non-binary. Is again neutral. Um, what I'm getting here right now between this Ten of Pentacles and the Wheel of Fortune is that time is going to allow this to complete itself out. You two really may be at odds with each other right now. You really might be. 
There might be such a rift between the two of you right now that you're just kind of like, I don't think this would ever come back around. Maybe either one of you are saying, I don't ever want this to come back around. Mm, you might want to watch that cancer video then. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> because in the cancer video, the, indivi the individuals involved that I was channeling for in that video were being asked to surrender by judgment, which is like a higher calling. You have to watch that video if this is resonating with you, just to see if this... But it's like this counterpart, this Queen of Cups, whoever this is, if it's a Cancerian, okay. If it's you, okay. If it's not a, a water sign, it doesn't matter. If you resonate as this Queen of Cups, then you are the completion to this masculine counterpart between the Wheel of Fortune and the Ten of Pentacles. And I just feel like time is of the essence. Just let this play out. And even the Wheel of Fortune came out for the Cancerian video in the pre-shuffle, all right? But then you're, but right now, y'all both, both of you, yes, we said both of you are dealing with this Five of Cups energy, however, whatever that, however that resonates. And I don't want to say, I'm definitely not going to say that only one person did wrong here. No, I feel like both of you have things that you regret in what happened between the two of you, all right? But at this point, it's time to just stop crying over the Three of Cups that the Three spilled and focus on the Two of Cups that's behind you, which would be the relationship, which would be something that actually is salvageable between the two of you. All is not lost. You may feel like it is right now, but all is not lost. All right, Leo? Or the Cancerian that I'm talking to? <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah, those, these, the Cancer and the Leo reading are definitely connected. Definitely connected. So you might want to watch them. All right, let's get into the rest of your reading, Leo. See what we've got for you. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Leos, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of July 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Um, I do want to wish a happy birthday to the July Leos out there. Now, um, I'm seeing yellow for you guys. I'm going to give this three shuffles. Uh, yellow is the color of the sun. Yellow is also the color of the solar plexus, which does represent energies of the sun, which would be your energy, right? I feel like you guys, Leo, you're, regardless of what may be going on for you right now, internally, externally, whatever, I feel like most of it, a lot of it is internal, to be quite honest, because externally things look great or can be perceived to be as really, really great for you. And that doesn't mean that they're not great, okay? That doesn't mean that the reflection or the, the expression that is visible um, in your external reality does not, it, it doesn't make it fake. OK, but there still could be some turmoil that you're dealing with on the inside that actually could be pretty debilitating at times. Um, not that it's debilitating all the time, but at certain times it really could be like, holy shit, this is crushing me right now. But it doesn't matter because I still feel like you are just moving strong, head, head strong, head up, facing the sky, just ready, just just looking ahead of you, just ready to go, just doing your thing, not letting anything get you down, or at least trying not to let anything get you down. And that's a good thing. Boop. Focused on you, focused on your career, focused on what you want to do with your life, focused on what you want to experience, what you want to achieve, what you want to build in your life. Very much focused on your own free will and how you want to express it and really trying not to let anything else get you down, especially not the trivial bullshit, okay? First card we have for you, the Six of Cups. Walking down memory lane. The past coming back to haunt you, maybe. This could be the energies that you're just trying to stay headstrong against. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. The first thing I heard when I looked at the Six of Cups was unrequited love. And that's not this card. Normally, that's the Four of Cups. But there could be a soulmate situation, a past life situation. 
maybe a twin flame situation. I don't know. It's entirely possible um, if you resonate with that journey. It did come out during the Ken Syrian video, and the two of these readings are pretty connected so far. So maybe. Um, so, but you have a soulmate, a past bond, maybe someone from the past in this lifetime, or it could be a past life situation um, in which you know of each other. Well, now you know of each other. Now you're aware of the connection when maybe you weren't before. And that's when the unrequited love took place. Maybe one of you was aware of it and the other was not or just refused to see it and some really gnarly shit went down. The other thing about that Queen of Cups that I should have, I wanted to mention before, but I forgot. Someone is really up in their emotions, really up in their emotions about it. And it could be both of you. You just could be expressing it differently. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Six of Cups. Underneath that we have, ooh, yeah, the Ace of Swords. Now the Ace of Swords also came out in the Cancerian video. I just heard unrequited love has now turned into realization of who this person was once was to you in another lifetime and why they feel or felt so strongly about you now. It hasn't gone away is what I'm hearing. It just might be different. It may have shifted. You may have to work harder for it now at this point. Or they're just really defensive now. Nine of Wands. But this also could be you, Leo. Because now, Leo, you may be the one. Well, I am. I'm talking to the Leo. So technically, like, this is most likely on the side of the Leo. Um, particularly a Leo. I'm feeling a Leo sun sign. But it doesn't have to be the sun sign. I mean, whatever. But I'm talking to the Leos right now. But if you are the cross watcher and this is actually resonating with you, then take it as it resonates, okay? I mean, we all have all of the signs in us anyway. It's really not that big of a deal. Anyway, <laughs> the person that's having this realization now about the unrequited love that was expressed for this soulmate in the past is super beat up. Super beat up. Because they went through hell. You went through hell to get to this, didn't you? You fought tooth and nail against it is what I'm feeling. And that's why you're now in this battered and bruised state of the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is an energy of the wounded warrior, yes, but it's also an energy of someone that has been through the absolute ringer and is still standing up fighting, like, like literally bleeding from, like their nose is bleeding, they've got a split lip, they've got a black eye, they've got bruises and lacerations all over them, bl fucking damn near bleeding out. But they're still standing there, holding onto that wand, <sighs> heaving to let, just like clinging to their last breath. You know what I mean? Like that kind of shit. That's what I'm getting from this card right now. That's typically what it, what it, represents or at least it can represent that and that's like but that's like an extreme version but that's kind of what i'm seeing here the universe or maybe yeah, well yeah the universe had to like really put you through it or is in the process of really putting you through it to get you to open your eyes to something that you may have refused to see in the past and it could have been you may have refused for quite a few lifetimes Meh. Underneath the nine. Whoa! -hoo -hoo -hoo! Excuse me. Death. Transformation. Mm -hmm. With the two of pentacles. Damn. With the two of pentacles and then the ace of cups again. Now the two of pentacles is here. Ace of cups is here. Okay, um, the Ace of Cups, like I said, the Ace of Cups came out in your pre-shuffle. It was the, the Queen of Cups came out and then I looked under the deck and there was that Ace of Cups. Love is winning here, regardless of the circumstances. And the Two of Pentacles came out in the Cancer reading also. Again, 
You might be dealing with a cancer. You might be a cancer Scorpio cusper. You might have, I'm sorry, not cancer Scorpio. What? I got Scorpio because death is Scorpio energy. Cancer Leo cusper. You might have cancer in one sign, Leo in another. Like for me, yes. I my right in Eastern, my rising sign is Leo. My moon is cancer. But then also my moon sign could be technically a cancer Leo cusper because it's 29 degrees cancer. You see how all the different ways that this is. This is just my, ex, my examples. This could work out in any other different way. But... It really doesn't matter the sign or the placement. Even if you stumble onto a reading in which is not your sun, moon, rising, Venus, or even if you're looking at Jupiter, it's not even that, and yet it resonates with you, take it. Go for it, all right? I'm gonna leave it there. Getting into your reading here. But also, death is that transformation that you might have been resisting, tooth and nail. But it looks like you can't really resist that anymore. I mean, you could, don't get me wrong. You really could, even though you have this knowledge here with the Ace of Swords, this understanding, this aha moment, this epiphany you've had, you really could resist, continue to resist. And that could be this Nine of Wands energy. But check it out. You can't run from death forever. Ultimately, death will win. And I'm not saying that someone is losing their life. Death here is a transformation from what, death is always a transformation from one state of being to another. So let me say it this way. You can't run from this transformation forever. You really can't. Some way or another, you are going to have to transform. Regardless of the circumstances. I mean, I know I, I, I know I am triggering some people as I'm saying that right now. I feel your egos flaring and being like, oh yeah, watch me. All right, cool. See you on the other side then. Let me know when you get, actually, you know, what, you know what? You don't even have to let me know when you'll get tired of that. We'll find you anyway. Getting into your reading. First half, second half of the month, you could look at it that way. Or you could look at it as the first half, second half of the reading. I recommend you just look at it as first half, second half of the reading because time is an illusion. Energies are fluid. It all just flows together anyway. Yeah? First set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, Leo. You have uh, the moon. Uh, more Cancerian energy because Cancer is ruled by the moon. But in the Tarot, technically, the moon is Piscean energy or Pisces. You could be dealing with a Pisces. You could have Pisces in your chart. Like me, I have my, in Eastern, my Venus is in Pisces. So, woo, there you go. Um, but what the moon here is speaking to uh, are illusions coming to light. Things starting to be revealed. Also cycles. All of this is cyclical in nature. So you really don't have to worry about when, how, or why something is going to work out. It's all part of cycles that are all part of a great, grand or greater design that is outside of our human realm of comprehension, okay? But I keep hearing unrequited love here. And what I'm picking up with this card in terms of that is someone is starting to see the error of their ways potentially, or Ace of Swords may be starting to see how their actions have influenced others because now it's, they're starting to get that back. And so that would be revealing the situation to them, revealing that would be this epiphany, this aha moment that someone is dealing with here. The moon is coupled with the Nine of Cups. Well, that sure is interesting, and it feels slightly contradictory. I feel like either someone is drowning their sorrows. Okay. Or someone is reveling in some sort of deception. But they wouldn't technically be reveling in it because they're drowning their senses so that they can withstand it. Or someone is becoming satisfied in things being revealed to them. But honestly, the strongest thing feels like somebody is like deadening their senses or drowning their sorrows in order to keep some themselves or someone else in the dark. 
This is very much an energy of I don't want to wake up slash I don't want to grow up. But the dark will give way to the light eventually. There's no holding back from this. There's no turning away from it. Keep in mind, all happens or all will happen in divine right time, i.e. cycles. Yes? Second set of surrounding energies, Leo, for the first half of your reading, you have... Well, shit. Justice. Yeah. <laughs> Darkness will give way to light. Eventually. Now, you could be dealing with a Libran also. Mm. Ringing. Justice is coupled with the Fool. All right. All right, Leo. Now, we're going to look at this on the brighter side here. If this moon with the Nine of Cups represents someone feeling satisfied, I'm hearing unrequited love again. Maybe someone's realized something, I feel like something is becoming re revealed, which is bringing some sort of satisfaction into your life. And it may have to do with some sort of unrequited love situation that you dealt with. Maybe that the other person dealt with. But it's bringing a sense of justice here, which is allowing someone to take a new leap of faith. You, potentially, Leo. The justice here could very well be you needing to take a leap of faith now in a brand new direction. So that might... It might feel like you're being forced to take a new leap of faith, but honestly, it's the next step in your journey. It's the right... Like there is a right or wrong, okay? Um, it is the best thing for you to do right now. It is the next step to take. You feel apprehensive. I do feel that. You're very unsure about this. And you may kind of feel like you are being, you may feel like you are a, uh, a prisoner on a pirate ship. And now these pirates are making you walk the plank. That's kind of what this feels like. But that's not what it is. Because in you taking this leap of faith, Leo or Crosswatcher, you're actually bringing greater justice into your life by bringing yourself out of the darkness and into the light. Now, for some of you, the cycles that are being illuminated for you or some of the things that were deceiving, that were being illuminated, that are being illuminated for you, whether that's other people's actions or situations, circumstances external to you, or maybe your own actions or maybe your own internal reality, That is what's causing you to take a leap of faith in a new direction. That is what's causing you to feel, I guess you could say, obligated to bring this sort of justice into your life by taking a leap of faith in a brand new direction. Okay? Okay. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, you have... Ooh! More Cancer energy, the chariot. And a lot of major arcana. So there are some Leos out there that are really going through a massive transformation. And I mean massive. One, two, three, four, five major arcana so far. Death, the moon, justice, the fool, and the chariot. But you see, with the chariot being in your challenge, your challenge is to bring yourself into balance. That means reconciling your light and your dark. Everybody's got it. Even Buddha had a light side and a dark side. It's never about abolishing one for sake of the other. In truth, it's about bringing the two sides together and balancing them out and allowing that to drive you forward. Because it is only then that you will have the wholeness, the autonomy to go after what you are really passionate about, what you really want to do in your life, what you're really meant to be doing in your life. But you have to bring yourself into balance first. And I feel like many, for many of you, it's starting with that leap of faith in a brand new direction that brings greater justice, not into just your life, but to lives of others. Now, 
you, in this sense, in taking a leap of faith that's now trick, creating a domino effect that brings justice into the lives of others, they're getting their comeuppance. What you are doing is moving forward in a direction and taking action that best serves you and your life and your mission. Nobody knows best about yourself and your life than you and God. Your God, source, creator, however you identify with the oneness, right? So don't think that if your decision to go in a new direction, to take, a leap of, to take a leap of faith, to put a stop to something and go in a radically different direction, don't think that if you are affecting other people's lives and it looks like it's a negative effect on the outside, if, and you're doing this from a balanced place and a just place, there is no reason for you to feel bad about that because ultimately they've made their bed and now they've got to lay in it just like you did. Just like you did, which is now causing or influencing you to put a stop to that, to, sorry guys, I'm getting excited, <laughs> to transform and go in a new direction. You've got to let the other people in, that are involved in this situation handle their own karma by themselves. I mean, you're handling your karma by yourself, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> the chariot is coupled with, ooh, the magician. The sixth major arcana in this reading so far, Leo. A do 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 But you see here, this is only... Your, cha your challenge is to master the elements you have at your disposal. Earth, air, fire, water. All the elements. Bring yourself into balance. To move in, dire in the direction that's best for you and to manifest your life. Your greatest expression. As above, so below. That is what the magician is gesturing here with this hand pointing down to the ground and this arm up here with the double-sided candle. Now, you may logically say, a candle can only burn one way up. Well, when magic is involved, the magician, anything can happen. Okay, closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Leo, you got the hanged man. Major Arcana number seven of this whole reading, not in terms of the chronological order of the Tarot, because obviously this is card number 12, as you can see by the Roman numerals up there. But this is the seventh Major Arcana in your reading so far for the month of July, Leo. Uh, damn. Hold on. Yes, I'm sorry. I got confused for a second. Sorry. Um, anyway, getting back into it. This is also more Piscean energy. Okay, so you could be dealing with a Pisces or you could have Pisces in your chart. Now, the hanged man here is talking about surrendering. Completely surrendering in order to gain some sort of new perspective. In order to gain some sort of enlightenment, which would be the halo around this man's head. If you can see that, you see the yellow ring around his head. Surrender is going to bring you a new way of being, a new way of seeing. You might feel like your hands are tied in this situation. And yes, circumstances logically may say to you, okay, well, my hands are tied because I took X, Y, and Z action in the past and now I really have no choice. Mm, yeah, okay, you could say it that way, but also it was designed this way. It's all part of the process of learning, development, expansion, and ascension. So you don't have to feel bad about that, okay? The hanged man is coupled with the King of Pentacles, Taurus energy, could be dealing with a Taurus, Cancer, I'm sorry, a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Um, but this is making you strong. 
This is really turning you into a king or a well-manifested individual. Even if you're a woman or you resonate more with feminine energy, it doesn't matter. This is just making you as very well-manifested, very well put together, very well equipped to take on the rest of your life, giving you, setting you up with the tools that you need, i.e. the magician and the chariot, really, but setting you up with the tools that you need to take further action in your life as you move forward because the masculine energies here are the action takers. The feminine energies are the receptive ones, right? So the feminine is the magnetic, the masculine is the electric. Here, this is teaching you, giving you the uh, alignment and enlightenment to set you up to take further action in the past. Not in the past, I'm sorry, in the future, moving forward. Having, with, with what you've learned in the past as your foundation, yeah? Getting into the second half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies for you, Leo, we have the Page of Pentacles. There you go, starting on that new level, having taken that leap of faith and now finding your footing in this brand new chapter. Page of Pentacles is coupled with strength. Here you are, Leo. And yet again, more major arcana. You're really going to need to be strong. You're really going to need to be strong. You're going to need to have faith in yourself. You're going to need to believe in yourself. You're going to need to not give up on yourself, on your journey, on whatever it is, God, the universe, your higher self, whoever is guiding you towards, is, is, is asking you to do, is whatever. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Leo, we have, ha, the Page of Cups. Two pages so far. So it really does look like you actually have taken that leap of faith or you're going to be taking that leap of faith. This doesn't just have to be for the month of July. This could be moving forward at any time. You know, these messages are eternal, are timeless. Time is an illusion. Um, apologies. The Page of Cups is a, is the um, is a reconciliatory energy. Is like I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Allow yourself to dream, though. Also, you know. If you find yourself really being stuck in the mundane, don't allow that to sap your um, youthful energy, okay? Don't allow that to um, block the connection between you and your inner child, your inner innocence, yes? Page of Cups is coupled with the Nine of Swords. Ooh, boy. Okay, um, there's another message that's coming through now. Um, because the Page of Cups can talk about an apology. And now the Page of Pentacles, all of the pages can be some sort of message or offering. Um, for some of you, there's a Leo out there that, or some Leos out there, <clears throat> that need to offer up some sort of apology and some sort of follow through to maybe that counterpart that we were talking about in the beginning of the reading, that Cancerian, or whoever that Queen of Cups is. There's either a Leo out there or someone connected to a Leo that either, well, desires to, yes, knows that the, the right thing to do is to reach out, make amends, but they need to have the balls, the strength, the cojones, to make that sort of offer, but not just make the offer, but like commit to it and follow through with it and allow it to grow and build from the page to the king. They also need to put forth some sort of apology, but they are fucking anxious. Don't know even where to begin. And they could be, they could be showing some sort of pride and ego Maybe not wanting to do it or uh, refusing to do it or keeping up appearance like, like what? Nothing's even wrong. When inside, internally, they know this needs to happen. The challenge 
here for you, Leo, in your second half of your reading. You have the Six of Pentacles, the balance between give and take, <sighs> maintaining your balance in some sort of situation. Unrequited love is a huge thing for whoever I'm channeling for right now because I keep hearing that. I think the tides have turned for someone that was dishing out some sort of like unrequited love or rejection type energy. Now they're starting to feel it. But the question is here, how do we keep this in this situation balanced? Because the person, well, both people have to learn how to balance give and take. I feel like the challenge right now is for the person that was the overtaker, not the overgiver, because I feel like the overgiver either has learned a lot more about not overgiving or is really in the process of starting to really get it. The, I, what I'm feeling here, the question is being asked, how do I give in a relationship? I don't even know how to do that. I'm not used to giving. I'm just used to allowing people to give me whatever they want to give me and then I don't have to do shit else. But now I'm being told to, asked to, guided to. These are all different things I'm hearing. To give. And I don't know the first thing about that. You'll get there. It takes time. It also takes vulnerability. Okay? I know that's difficult. Six of Pentacles is coupled with, oh shit, the Ten of Wands. I don't know the first thing about this. Wow. There are a lot of burdens between the balance of give and take here. And it's about learning how to release them. Woo! Ooh, excuse me, guys. Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Leo. You have the Hierophant. More Taurus energy. Right under that King of Pentacles, which does represent Taurus. That's interesting. But the Hierophant here. Dogma. Marriage. Sure. Commitment. Okay. Uh, societal norms, societal expectancies, or uh, whatever. Teaching and learning, but in this case, I really do feel like it's learning. Especially with this Ace of Swords here in the overall energy. The Hierophant is coupled with... Oof, the Two of Swords. I get a sense here that there are some things in place, some societal, some societal norms in place that someone is really either having trouble looking past or is refusing to look past. Emphasis on the refusal. But you got to get past it someday. You have to get past the dogma for whoever this is for. You ha just, you have to get past the dogma before you can really be free. Before you can be in a place to understand yourself and to balance yourself, to reconcile between the light and the dark and then manifest what it is you truly desire. Not what others tell you you should want, what you truly desire. But really, it really, in order to do that, you've got to get past this first. The Hierophant can be seen as the Pope. I don't know why that was coming through. Because I don't often, rec I don't often, um, I don't often make that direct association between the Pope and the Hierophant. But it really could be, that's the energy that this represents. 
I don't know, maybe you're an individual that identifies with the Pope or really loves and respects the Pope. And, and I'm not, I, and I'm not, um, I'm not passing judgment there at all. I mean, I'm not a religious person. I'm a spiritual, more of a spiritual person. Uh, religion, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't deal, do, I don't, I don't um, associate with religion anymore. But I don't pass, I'm not passing judgment on anyone that does. But I feel like for whoever this is for, and also I want to show you, but this is a papal figure in the Hierophant here. So maybe you identify with the blessings or the teachings of the Pope, or maybe you just identify with the church. But there's another image of the Pope right there. See that? Boop, right there. I just noticed that. And that's the death card. You see, even the Pope, this all-powerful dogmatic figure, has no power over death. You see how the Pope is now making an offering? See that? Making an offer uh, uh, is, 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 you know, praying in front of death. Could even be seen as being saying, please have mercy. Mercy? I'm just doing my job, homie, says death. Everybody's got to transform at some point. How difficult you make it for yourself is up to you. Let's get into your oracle message. For my Leos. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. For my Leos. For my Leos. Last shuffle here. Alrighty. Let's see what we've got for you, Leo, for the month of July. 2019. There it is. No. Okay. All right. What do we got here, Leo? <laughs> I really love this deck, you guys. I mean, it's been so perfect. I used it for June and now I'm using it for July and it's great. But we have card number 12. Every journey starts with a single step. I mean, come on. Oops, I had it right there. It was right there. Ooh, that's a long one. Okay, here we go. You are on a journey. Yes, it is an internal journey, but there is also a physical expression of this journey that is going to become increasingly important to the fulfillment of your destiny in this lifetime. Your journey has started on the inside, but its destination will be the physical expression of an internal healing. This journey will draw upon what you have learned and mastered over the course of your life. So much so, that you may feel as though your life experiences have prepared you just for this particular adventure. You have all that you need within you. This is not a time to worry about what you are going to take with you. From within your heart, you will sense what needs to be left behind you now. You may be surprised at exactly how much you can, I'm sorry, how much can be left behind without you feeling concerned or anxious you will be able to travel far lighter than ever imagined possible. To be, a best to be best equipped for this journey, you will need a lightness of heart and the realization that change can be an incredible blessing, even if what you are leaving behind is something you found secure, safe, familiar, or comforting. Just as the butterfly leaves the chrysalis behind when it is time to spread its newly formed wings, so too are you ready to leave behind what's, what once was and embrace what is more appropriate for you at this time. There is an element to the journey you are embarking upon that is unknown. Perhaps it is news to you that you are even taking a journey. However, the realization that traveling along a familiar path brings no guarantees is more likely. This open, unscripted quality to your journey will help you gain the most from your experiences. You see, this journey is a spiritual gift. 
It is an invitation from the great loving heart of the universe calling you into something that you would not have otherwise found. You are not supposed to know all the details nor how it is going to work out before you set out. You are just meant to take one step after the other again and again so that you can receive the gifts that are headed your way. If you are considering taking a physical trip somewhere, this oracle comes as confirmation that the journey will in some way be a life-changing one, and this is good. If the journey you are considering is of a more internal variety, such as exploring a new field of consciousness, beginning a new creative work, or traveling into the void of unknown possibilities in order to start your work, then this oracle is confirmation that it is indeed a wise choice and much new life will come of it. This oracle brings you particular guidance that the apparently small steps you are taking in an area of your life, important to you right now, are actually far more powerful and constructive than you realize. Sometimes we are gaining ground, sorry, sometimes we are gaining ground, but the effect is not immediately obvious. This doesn't mean that nothing is happening. It simply means that the effects of your actions are cumulative and soon they will be begin to overflow into the physical world with a positive impact that may surprise you. This oracle brings you the message of keep going. Nine of wands in your overall energy, perseverance, just keep going. If you have been doing a lot of inner work and are frustrated or concerned that you are not seeing the results translate into the physical world, keep faith as the physical manifestation of your inner work is coming. Remember that you have all the resources you need and then some. Your inner and outer journeys are blessed with positive energy and all you need to do is keep going one step at a time. So there you have it, Leo. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. If you would like to look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. Um, a very happy birthday to the July Leos out there. And I look forward to connecting with you guys again for the month of August. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.